In the last lecture, we've seen the following test for quantify elimination. A formula phi is t equivalent to a quantifier free formula um, if, and only if, for all m and n models of t and any substructure a of m and n and any tuple from the substructure a here, the formula phi of a1 up to a n holds in m if and only if it holds in n. And if this condition holds for all phi, then t has quantified elimination. Well, you may wonder where that um, condition about the substructures comes from. Um, in this context, they actually arise quite naturally because um, for quantifier-free formulas, we have the following persistence property for substructures. If A is a substructure of B, and phi is quantifier-free, and A is a tuple from the substructure A, then this formula phi uh, evaluated on A holds in A if and only if it holds in B. So quantifier-free formulas persist for substructures. It might be helpful to compare this to the notion of elementary substructure. Then we would actually have to have to have this condition here for all formulas phi, not just the quantifier-free ones. So, but since we're particularly interested in quantifier-free formulas, it makes sense that uh, substructures appear now instead of uh, the stronger notion of elementary substructures. It is not very hard to prove this and should, as usual, give this a try. And then if you look at it, so if you compare this criterion here to the criterion star for um, quantifier elimination, you can use this to prove that this criterion star actually always applies for quantifier free formulas. But for in theory, to have quantifier elimination, we would need it to hold for all formulas, not just the quantifier free ones. And to further stress the rule that substructures play when it comes to quantifier elimination, um, look at this alternative characterization here. And it's um, rather easy to prove from the um, criterion we had on the first slide. Namely, a theory has quantifier elimination if and only if, whenever we have a substructure of a model of T, if I add the simple, that means quantifier free diagram of A to T, I get a complete theory. So here, this one was the simple diagram. Collecting all quantifier free constant formulas uh, over the uh, extended language that adds a constant symbol for all elements in A. And this alternative criterion is also called substructure completeness um, because we get a complete theory whenever we add the diagram of a substructure of a model of T to T. Substructure completeness actually is closely related to a notion of uh, in model theory that is quite com important, namely that of model completeness. So if in this criterion star from the beginning, we put the substructure to be one of the models, we obtain the following. If we have two models of T and one is a substructure of the other, then it actually has to be an elementary substructure. And theories with this property are called model complete. And um, you can again characterize model completeness through a prop property similar to substructure completeness, namely it holds that T is model complete if and only if for all models if I add uh, the simple diagram to the theory I get a complete theory. Again in the extended language of course. And compare this once more to substructure completeness. Um, here we have that 
for any substructure of a model of T, T plus uh, the simple diagram is complete. So you immediately see that substructure completeness implies model completeness, but not necessarily uh, the other way. The question is now, is there something we can add on to model completeness to get substructure completeness and uh, hence uh, quantify elimination? And in the following, we'll see that for certain algebraic theories, there is such a criterion we can add on to model completeness to get uh, quantify elimination. For later, it will be nice to have a different characterization, or yet a different characterization of model completeness. Um, this is known as uh, Robinson's test. Suppose A is a substructure of B, and um, we say that A is existentially closed in B, if the following holds, whenever B uh, satisfies the formula that there exists x phi xa, where a is a tuple from the smallest structure and q is a uh, phi is a quantifier free formula, right? So whenever we can um, make an existential uh, formula true with uh, parameters from the smallest structure. This formula is also true in the smaller structure. And um, the test for a model completeness is then that if uh, T is a theory, then T is model complete if and only if for all models A, B of T, if A is a substructure of B, then A is existentially closed in B. So this is a little bit simpler than... Um, the full uh, substructure, elementary substructure requirement. In the literature, you can find this existentially closed, also referred to uh, with the symbol uh, one for existential, or sometimes also as S for simply closed. So we've seen that substructures play an important role in the characterization and study of quantify elimination. Um, however, the definition or nature of a substructure is primarily algebraic, right? The way that substructures are defined is purely a relation between uh, the um, elements of the structures. Um, the question is for us, it might be better to actually have a model theoretic characterization of substructures. And there is indeed such a characterization. Uh, this will be very helpful for us later on. So given a theory T, let T universal be what is called the universal part of T, and that consists of all sentences uh, sigma, such that sigma is of the form for all x, phi, where phi is quantifier free. And of course, that sigma is uh, uh, implied by t. So we collect a certain form of sentences, namely the ones that have one universal quantifier, and uh, then a uh, quantifier free kernel, uh, in a set, so as long as they follow from T. And the desired characterization now is the following. Namely, it holds that A is a model of the universal part of T, if and only if it is a substructure of a model of T. So that's going to be quite nice for us, because that means in order to look at substructures, we can see what is uh, the universal part of T. We can use this uh, previous characterization of substructures of models of T um, to give a new characterization of uh, substructure completeness using the notion of model completions. 
So the idea of a model completion is the following. Um, suppose we have a T theory T that extends a theory T0. This theory T0 might not be model complete, but we, the idea is to extend it so that then when we add to that extended theory, we add any model of T0. If that becomes complete, then T is called the model completion of T0. Such a model completion does not need to exist, but if it exists, it's actually unique. And using this notion of model completion, we can characterize substructure completeness as follows, namely, T is substructure complete if and only if T is the model completion of its universal part. As with all the propositions listed so far, um, you should um, go ahead and try to prove them. Most proofs are not very hard. They essentially just chase uh, through the definitions. Um, some, like uh, Robinson's test, for example, is a little bit more complicated. If you get stuck there, um, you can find a proof in any uh, or many standard texts on model theory. So in general, one procedure to test for quantify elimination now is the following. First, we find, given a theory T, we find, try to find its universal part, and then we check if T is the model completion of that universal part. We will do this process now for the theory of algebraically closed fields, or uh, short ACF. The language that we are working over is the language of rings, um, namely 0, 1, plus binary function symbol, minus unary function symbol, and uh, times binary function symbol. The axioms are the field axioms, and we add the uh, axioms for algebraic closure, namely for every n we have um, the formula here, for every z0 up to zn minus 1, there exists a solution to the polynomial given um, by, with the coefficient, coefficients given by the zi's. And I should note right here that um, the group axioms for plus can be written as for all sentences, so universal sentences, so we don't need an existential quantifier in there because we have the minus symbol here. So in the first step, we now try to find the universal part of ACF. For this, we first note that all axioms except the existence of a multiplicative inverse and the algebraic closure, so the existence of solutions to polynomials, which uh, we've wrote down on the previous slide, those are all those axioms except those two here are um, uh, universal sentences. Moreover, the following is not an axiom, but it is a consequence of, a, of, the, of ACF, um, and it's a consequence in form of a universal sentence, namely that whenever uh, a product is zero, one of the uh, factors will have to be zero. And these two together now imply that any model of the universal part of ACF is an integral domain. On the other hand now, given an integral domain D, we can take the algebraic closure of its fraction field and obtain a model of uh, ACF, so an algebraically closed field, which contains D as a subring. Note that because the due to the choice of our language, um, substructures now of um, in over our language are just subrings. And since we know that uh, D is a model of ACF universal part, if and only if it is a substructure of a model of ACF, 
And we've seen that all of these are integral domains and we can extend. So every integral domain is the subring of an algebraically closed field, right? It follows that ACF universal part of ACF is exactly the theory of integral domains. The previous argument already hinted at an important property of um, these algebraic constructions or algebraic structures, namely they permit a closure operation. So in this case, we had that if we have an integ integral domain, we can find an algebraically closed field, d bar, right? namely the algebraic closure of the fraction field with the important property that this d bar embeds into every algebraically closed field that contains d as a subring. This is also known as Steinitz's theorem. And um, we can generalize this property uh, to a model theoretic property. Um, we say that the universal part of T permits a closure operation if for every model of the universal part there exists an, a model A bar of T extending A such that if A is a substructure of another model of T, then there exists an embedding of A bar into B, leaving A pointwise fixed. And having such a closure operation now gives us a sufficient add-on, right? So an, an, a sufficient condition that we can add to model completeness that will, together with model completeness, ensure us uh, uh, quantify elimination. So here's the proposition. Uh, try to prove it as usual. If one, the universal part of T has a closure operation, and second, for all um, A, B models of T, if A is a substructure of B, then it's elementary closed in B. Uh, remember that was equivalent to model completeness, but that's the form of model completeness we'll use in the following proof. So if these two properties hold, then T has quantifier elimination. So we're now ready to prove that the theory of algebraically closed fields has quantifier elimination. Now, we've already seen that one holds, one in the condition for the uh, uh, quantifier elimination that we had in the last slide. So it remains to show that ACF satisfies the second condition. So for that, Assume that we have two algebraically closed fields, F is contained in K. And also assume that K satisfies the existential statement exists X phi with a parameter A via a witness B in K. Right? So the parameters are from the smaller structure F and phi is quantifier free. So the claim now is that F also satisfies this existential statement with parameters from a from the smaller structure f. To start, we make our life a little bit easier by showing that it suffices to consider phi, which are conjunctions of atomic formulas and negation of atomic formulas. So we can reduce uh, our argument to just looking at conjunctions of this special form. Again, that's not uh, hard to show, but you, you should uh, sit down and uh, work through this briefly. Now in the next step, we show that, or argue that over fields, any atomic formula is equivalent to a condition polynomial of x equals zero, where p is a multivariable polynomial with coefficients of, um, with integer coefficients. So to sum up, that means we can assume that phi is of the form a big conjunction where some part of the conjunction is um, of, are of the form pi uh, of x equals zero, and uh, the other part of the conjunction is of the form qi of x is not equal to zero. 
where uh, pi and qi, these are all polynomials uh, over x by, uh, vector uh, with integer coefficients. Now for given our tuple a in f, right, we can interpret these polynomials pi and qi if we fix the um, the uh, x1 up to xn uh, components of these polynomials here with a, then these we can interpret these as polynomials uh, in one variable with coefficients from f. So now if one of the pi's here is a non-zero polynomial, then we would have that k satisfies that pi of b a is zero. This would imply that b is algebraic over f because remember the pi's I have now interpreted as a, a polynomial over a single variable would have coefficients from f. That would mean b is algebraic over f, but f is algebraically closed. That would mean b is an f. So that would mean that here we have all uh, elements here from f and since f is a substructure of k and uh, pi is quantifier free and quantifier free formulas with um, element uh, evaluated over elements from the smallest structure uh, persist when passing to the uh, substructure that would mean that we actually have our uh, witness for the existential statement in um, in the smaller structure, remember B was the um, the statement, the witness for the existential statement in K. So that would mean B is an F, and hence the um, by the argument I just outlined, the existential statement is uh, satisfied in F, and we are done. Hence, for the rest of this argument, we can assume now that phi is simply a conjunction of the qi's uh, not equal to, to zero. By choice of b, we know that in k, q, when I plug in b into a uh, and a into qi, this must evaluate not to zero, right? because uh, qi is one of the, is a part of phi and k, uh, k um, satisfies the existential statement uh, with witness uh, with uh, via the witness b so since this polynomial here evaluates not to zero in particular it must be for each i it must not be the zero polynomial but if a polynomial is not zero it has only finitely many solutions in uh, in the field f but we know that algebraically closed fields are infinite. Well, if there were only finitely many elements, you could take, uh, let's say, a0 up to a n, you could take uh, this polynomial, right? uh, take the product of all of these factors, add one, put it to zero, this would not have a zero in that finite field. And so, since each qi has only finitely many solutions, but we want elements, witnesses, that witness that they are not zero, right? But there are only finitely many solutions, so, and an algebraically closed field is infinite, there ha has to exist an element of f that makes all of these polynomials, qi's, the qi's not zero over f. But since we now assume that phi was of this form, this implies that phi satisfies the existential statement there exists x phi x a and this concludes our proof